Welcome to the Military Justice Today podcast with your host, Robert Capovilla and Mickey Williams, covering the full range of military law topics from all branches of the armed forces. Today's episode is made possible in part by the law firm of Capovilla and Williams. And now, let's welcome the hosts of the show, Rob and Mickey. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Military Justice Today. I'm Matt Storoziak, stepping in momentarily for the real host of the show, Robert Capavilla and Mickey Williams, experienced trial attorneys. Happy New Year, gentlemen. Great to have you back in the studio. Great to be here, Matthew. Happy New Year, Matthew. Going to be a wonderful year for all of us. I'm quite certain of it. So our pre-show question today actually ties into the the episode topic today. Mm. Our pre-show question is the most what is the most fun you had when you were on active duty and what is the least fun you had? And this can be an event, it could be an hour, it could be a couple of days, it could be a week. It doesn't matter where it was at, but what is the most fun thing you did in the military and why? And then the thing that you would rather not do again ever. Let's start with Mickey Williams today. Okay. Um, or you want me to start with Robert no, Capavilla? It's fine. Um, I was, you know, you think about, I, I was in for quite some time, and a lot of people know this about me, that I was enlisted before I was in the, the JAG officer. I was in the Ranger Regiment, and I was thinking about all the crazy stuff I, I had done, and a lot of people would think that, hey, you know, fast roping out of helicopters and jumping on airplanes and, and you know, going to the range, that sounds so cool. It is cool the first time you do it. But when you're in the regiment, you do that stuff almost every freaking day. And it just uh, – and it's good that you do it every day. You get used to it. And of you, course. And, and, and you learn it. And what you got to go through to jump out of an airplane is grueling, um, the refresher training and everything that you have to do. And you got to sit on the tarmac for hours before you actually get to jump. But to me, the most fun was uh, at the end of a deployment – and I had you know four deployments while I was in there. We would do skits, and it was about wild stuff that happened uh, <laughs> happened uh, during the deployment that you would make fun of the officers, you'd make fun of the, your NCOs, you'd make fun of each other, and they're always X rated like these things. And this was like you know all male unit and enclosed in, in, in like this in a hangar or something like that. We do these skits, and, and that was a ton of fun. What uh, was it a time when you could say things maybe about your senior guys that you wouldn't otherwise? There were, yeah, with it? it was that. There was a lot of props, um, yeah. a, lot, a lot of shaving cream props. I'll just leave it <laughs> leave it at that one. Um, silly string, you know. Uh, the the other thing that was really cool was one time, and this was we were right. I can't remember which camp we were in, but it was right inside, right inside the green zone, and. Um, we were there with the Delta guys, and those were like the coolest guys in the entire military, not just the Army, but the entire – it's like the cream of the crop, and, yeah. and that's, that's no exaggeration. They are the best. And we were working with these guys, and they had all these, all these weapons that they had confiscated from all these different sites. And we had like grease guns, AK-47s, and, and – uh, like machine, like submachine guns, like the stuff that the mobsters used to have, and they had dozens and dozens of them. And we, they had their own range right there. And I was used to shooting the M4, the two forty, the fifty cal. Uh, I shot all that stuff, shot mortars, shot you know whatever. But to me, the funnest, the coolest time was being able to shoot all these little machine guns and just like burping it down down the range and blowing yeah. up targets. So that that was really cool because when you're with the Delta guys. There is range safety, but it ain't anything like what we what you're used to in the army. There's not like, all right, switch your yeah your your, your uh, lever from from uh, safety to fire, and you know look down right. There's some guy in a tower. It's not like that over there. They're just like, all right, start shooting. <laughs> Did they get a kick out of watching you guys play around with that stuff? I mean, were they kind of like because for them it's probably. If no they, big deal, if, right? Yeah, if they did, they didn't show it. That's the thing. These guys don't have, they don't yeah. really show much. Um, we did do a competition against, not against them. This was a different deployment in Afghanistan. It was like a, a ranger, like a little mini ranger competition. And they had CIA guys there, FBI guys there, and some SF guys, uh, special forces, Green Berets. 
and we did like a shooting competition, a grenade throw toss and like a run and all this stuff. That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah. And the, the one thing the, the CIA or the FBI guys kicked her ass at was shooting a pistol. Cause you don't shoot a lot of pistols yeah. in, in the regiment. You, it's mostly all you know, long, long guns. And uh, that was the one event that I, that I remembered that uh, I needed to improve on. Yeah, was shooting the pistol. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going uh, that's too cool. Long. Well, I'm going to come back to you on your uh, on your worst experience. I want to hit uh, Mr. Capavilla here with his most fun experience while he was inactive. I loved my time in the United States Army. I have almost no bad memories of my time there. Um, you know, and I think as I look back, maybe I enjoyed some things more looking back than I did in the moment. Uh, so I, I would say. Some of the most fun I had, you know, being able to repel out of a Black Hawk helicopter as an attorney was a cool thing. Um, I did what's called the Manchu Mile, which is a uh, a 26.2 or 3 mile ruck march through the mountains of Korea uh, when I was with 2ID. It was the last year they were doing it. Um, I got to do that, and that was uh, throughout the night. Uh, and I'll, I'll never, you know, that's a night that I'll never forget being with a bunch of infantry guys. Uh, it was me and my buddy, JJ Wellemeyer. Uh, we had a wonderful time. I trained up for it. it. It was a sense of accomplishment. You know, I got to see some things and do some things that others didn't get to see or do. Um, I'll always remember the food in Korea. The food in Korea was outrageously good. There was a mom and pop shop outside of uh, Camp Casey where they would do the spicy chicken. And uh, the whole, basically the whole JAG office, not the whole JAG office, but a group of us guys like me and JJ and, and uh, uh, would, would head out there. Um, Matt Gallagher was with us at the time. Uh, Dan, Matt, all these buddies of mine, we go out there and, and get some uh, spicy chicken. It was incredible. Um, I, I remember all the, back then I was a lot better shape. I have fond memories of training up for the 10 miler and things like that. I, I enjoyed that a tremendous amount but I'll say the one thing that resonates with me now that I've been out, um, you know, for, for some time is the people. I have fond memories with wonderful, wonderful people. You meet wonderful people in the United States Army JAG Corps, um, people that I wish I stayed in better touch with. But you meet truly the best people you're going to meet in your life in yeah. the Army JAG Corps. Yeah. Well, maybe you can reconnect with some of them in 2023. Well, I'm an outcast now. I'm, I'm a civilian defense attorney. I'm money hungry. I'm greedy. I'm this, guy. I'm that now. Uh, and they don't keep up with me as much anymore. But there's certainly some folks I'd love to chat with again um, here in the next year. Nobody could resist your charm. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised <laughs> about that. Uh, all right. Well, let's go back to you, Mickey. What about your worst experience? Um I don't want to, I mean, the point here is not to get too deep or heavy, but um, I'll leave that up to you. What was your worst experience, the thing you would not want to do again? Oh, uh, ranger school. I wouldn't want to do. <laughs> really? <I bet>. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. Why? Uh, Just uh, nonstop yeah, training? And- yeah, it's, it, it sucks, man. Ranger school freaking sucks. Um, I went in 2003, 20 years ago, right? That's when I went. And... um it was horrible. Um, I'm glad I did it. It's horrible. Like, how? Because it was just difficult. It was constant. Yeah, it's just mental and physical. You're just in the suck the whole time, man. Like you, you get like two MREs a day, and you're in the elements all the time. You don't. You don't get hardly any sleep the whole time you're there. I mean, it's 60 days of hell. It really does suck. And God bless those guys who got recycled over and over and made it through. Like, I think you get one recycle a phase. And I, a buddy of mine, very good buddy of mine, Thad Wheatley, um, I think he got recycled in Florida phase. And then what happens is, is the, the RIs took a break to prepare for best ranger. So he was stuck in ranger school oh, man. <laughs> until they finished best <laughs> ranger. Uh, and that was like six weeks or something some ridiculous thing and he was he was there he was going to the gator lounge like every day because there's nothing else to do yeah the good thing about that was is he was all ready to go in florida phase is the last phase that you do at least it was back then um in ranger school so he's ready to go and get through it but yeah that that was miserable man um and then the deployments weren't that i mean training up for the deployments sucked but deployments were actually good in this one sense is you you did not have any of the pressures to go out and party 
or anything like that. All you needed to do was focus and get totally jacked. And so when you got back, <laughs> when you got, I wish we had this episode on video because when Mickey said that, his eyes got yeah. all yeah. wide. Well, yeah. I drank three hundred, jacked three hundred. Yeah. What you call it's a protein a day. <laughs> and when you get back from deployment, you look like a Greek god. Yeah, yeah, and and you just go out and you have a great time and and uh, yeah, man. And when you're like twenty, your your testosterone's through the roof already, and you're in you're around a bunch of other guys who are really testosteroned out. So it's like feeding on each other, yeah. and you have all these comps in the gym. Yeah, it was it was it was cool, man. That, the, that was a good time. Tanning, I remember tanning in Afghanistan. This yeah, guy, I remember sitting there. I'm laying down. I'm sitting there tanning. I look up and I see a marine on the guard tower, like sitting there pulling guard. I, I felt like I was at a resort or something. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's pulling guard. Here I am, Danny. Yeah, man. That's funny. Dude, there's, pickies, right. there's pictures of Mick back in the day. Dude was dude was legit, man. I'm he impressed. was jacked out of his mind. I'm impressed oh, everybody with him now. Was, yeah. I mean, I'm impressed with him. And that, in 2023, we're getting back to that, gentlemen. All right? Okay. We're getting yeah, back I, to hey, that. Hey, man, let's do it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Robert, you're up. Your least favorite part of when you were in. I never want to conduct uh, physical training again in, um, you know, five degree weather outside like we did in 2ID world all the time. Um, I never want to ever do a, an administrative law review uh, on telling uh, commanding generals and two star generals when they can take a helicopter and when they can't. That was an unpleasant experience. Um, I did not like those ethical reviews at all. Um, and uh, third, I would never want to prosecute a soldier again. I was a uh, prosecutor uh, for a number of years in the uh, Army JAG Corps. I never took to it. I never liked it. I always felt like I was picking on the little guy, uh, bullying the little guy. It was just not in my nature to prosecute. Some people, they're born to be prosecutors, and we need prosecutors. All right, We need prosecutors. People do bad stuff. But for me, I even when the, even when the soldier did a bad thing, I would look over the other side of the courthouse and see a 20-year-old kid who, you know, came from nothing. His mom and dad couldn't even afford to get out to the courthouse. Um, you know, the army was all he had. He had no education. And here I was trying to prosecute him oftentimes for things that I didn't even believe in. Um, and I, I did not like that experience at all. Even the convictions I did get, I seldom felt very good about it. Um, so I'd never, I'd never want to prosecute a soldier again. Yeah, I understand. That probably make, what makes you a really good defense attorney now. Well, and you got to remember too, and this is changing now, but you know, and it's it's only changing kind of now with the creation of the quote super prosecutor's office, right, uh, for the JAG Corps. But back then, um, you, the individual prosecutors, had no say whatsoever. If, if the command said they was going to 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 prosecute, they wanted to go to court martial. You know, you had to take it to court martial. Really, whatever, regardless of what you personally thought about the case. And I hated that. I absolutely hated that. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. I felt it was uh, a very tough system to operate in. And there was more than one time in the courthouse as a prosecutor that my heart simply wasn't in it. Um, and that was a big part of why I got out, to be honest with you. They wanted to, the JAG Corps was considering making me a special victims prosecutor to keep me in the courtroom because that's what I wanted to do. And um, I just had no interest in that whatsoever. You know, a buddy of mine, John Marshall, he, he uh, this is just to talk about how, how much you know pressure. Matt's going to call us afterwards and say we shouldn't use names, and then we're going to have to pay Matt to edit names out. That's what's going to happen here. <laughs> well, I, John's not going to care about it. He's not even in anymore. Um, and he's a good buddy of mine. So just to talk about the pressure, he refused to take a case to trial, and he was a prosecutor, and he was at one good of the – he was down at Eglin at uh, Seventh Group, I believe, the SF Group down there. And he was like, I'm not prosecuting this. I'm, it's not ethical. I, I don't want to take it. They flew the SJA down. To talk to him, right? To right. quote, to quote, advise him about right know, his career and everything else. Kind of like what we saw in that case that we talked about with the PPTO guy threatening all those captains' careers. Oh stuff. yeah, 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 yeah. When we had yeah. Colby Vokey on, yeah, right. And John, John was a captain at the time. Yeah, when this happened, and he said that was it for me. Like once they tried to pressure me to do it, and I refused to do it, and, and nothing ever ended up happening with the case because he was like, "Ma'am, if you want to take the case." <laughs> go at it right i'm not doing oh, good it. for him a lot yeah. of people didn't have the backbone to do that and it does hurt your career and i yeah. didn't like it i didn't like it i had to prosecute one case in particular that i look back on and feel ashamed of um thank god he was found not guilty i don't know how i'd feel if he was in fact found guilty um but you're a young soldier and you're a young jag officer and you do what you need to do 
I'm surprised that the five o'clock shadow uh, story didn't get to your top one or two unpleasant um, experiences when you were in. When the guy, <laughs> when the guy <laughs> caught you in the in the supermarket, and and then he took all the and pizzas. You swore you had shaved that morning, right? Isn't that what happened? Yeah, I know. I mean, this we is don't a, have to rehash. This is a lighthearted thing, but... podcast. We haven't even talked about the actual topic well, yet, which is the best bases well. and the the bases we love to travel to versus the bases we don't like to travel we don't to. Need to tell the story. But I just thought I'm surprised what, that's not at your what what. And I've been I've had people that I don't know now that I'm a civilian defense <laughs> counsel come up to me and bring the story up to me. Um, I don't know if it's risen to the level of lore of the core because I'm not part of the core anymore. But what Matt's referring to is during a holiday weekend in Camp Casey. I had the 2ID CG at the time. He is now deceased, which is very sad. But um, he was a two-star general named Major General Vandal. He lit me up in the commissary uh, in front of everybody in the grocery store for having a 5 o'clock shadow and told me that what I had done by not shaving that morning was the same as drinking and driving. That um, Anyway, and then, yes, I went there to get a frozen pizza specifically, and he took all the pizza. Well, the best left. part of the story was that he not only lit you up once, but he lit you up twice. Right? Yeah, <laughs> to me, the, that's that, right. He lit me up one yeah. time, and then we went and got our stuff, and then he saw me again, and he put me at attention. I was at attention in civilians in the middle of the uh, that small 2ID commissary up there in uh, Camp Red Cloud, and um, it was scary. I mean, he, he it was scary. It was no laughing matter. I had to report it to my SJ and everything. I actually found an award. I was organizing my office. Colonel Hamilton, my SJ at the time, gave me an award for like best story of the year or something and it was because of the uh, whole shaving thing oh it's like the dundies um, yeah and now i you know i certainly building i certainly uh, shaved uh, every well, day after that to me the best part of that story it has not had nothing to do with what happened there in the px wherever the wherever the heck that was it was in the gym <laughs> and that, to me, was the biggest yeah. crime of all. Yeah. Okay, real quick. Yeah. And and this, listen, uh, General Vandal was a patriot, first and foremost, okay? But he was he was a lifter, okay? And um, we would lift out. We would lift often at the same time. I would do PT at the time when I was in great shape. After PT, I'd go straight to the gym. And he would be in there at the same time. And it was the back machine. It was like the upright, the, like the, the, lap, the, pull the lap pull down. Yeah. Yeah. And he asked if he could work in with me. And I was like, oh, of course. You know, he's the freaking commanding general. Do whatever you want. Work in with me. Yes, sir. Of course. I just didn't want him to recognize me from the commissary. And he he cranks out a first set. And he's I'm, I'm standing right next to him. And he's looking at me. And I'm looking at him. And he looks away. <laughs> and then he, he cranks out a second set. <laughs> and he looks at me. He goes, hey. I'm going to be here a minute, okay? I said, Roger that, sir. And I walked away. <laughs> stole the yeah, machine. Yeah, he stole, he stole the you. machine. That's so not working Working in. in meant go do something else. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, th- those are two stories uh, from uh, my time in Korea. Wonderful time in my life. Well, we're going to we're gonna stay lighthearted in this podcast. Um, so I think uh, a little bit of extra sharing on those stories is, is fun and what we've set out here to do in this episode. But uh, today's topic is are is are your favorite bases to spend time at, or maybe even do something specific at, and your least favorite bases or installations. Now, before we go any further, though, and and my again, everybody on the podcast at this point knows that I have no military background whatsoever, and so I often use the wrong terminology. But for my purposes today. Are these words interchangeable? I'm on post. I'm on base. I'm stationed at. Yes. Are those? Uh, yes. I'm not the, a fool if I say one or the other. No, those I mean, are I'm a fool, those, but not in this instance. Those are interchangeable, and and I picked. Uh, I have a list of five favorite places and five least favorite places, and I I I base my list not off not just off of location or whatever. I base it off also off of. Um, a good experience there, you know, looking back at the team I worked with at that particular base. So I have some of my favorite places that I think some service members that listen to this will be like, what the heck? That place sucks. Yeah, there's no rules here. Right, right. There's no rules here. Um, and I'm interested to hear the least favorite places, too, as to why. And I guess it doesn't even need to be when you were when you were active. could be something you go to now for particular well, clients. And as the folks who probably listen to this podcast know, Mickey and I travel all over the world, as does our firm. We go to, we've been to dozens and dozens and dozens of bases all across the DOD, Air Force, uh, Coast Guard. I guess that's not DOD, but you get the point. Um, Army, Navy, Marine Corps. We've been to reserve installations. We've been, you know, pretty much any major installation, you name it, we've been there. 
Nice. Well, who wants to start, gentlemen? We're going to start with your most favorite place. Um, Mickey, you want to start? Yeah, I'll give my first one here. Uh, it's pretty easy. Um, I don't know if it's at the top of my list, but it's certainly in the mix. And this is going to sound weird to a lot of people, but I have a lot of great memories at this place, and it's Fort Lee, Virginia. And that was the place I was first stationed at when I got out of the JAG school. And I had some – all three of my children were born there in Richmond. Um, and I, I – all my, my first trial was there, my first, you know, all, all that stuff was done there. But I had incredible friends and, and incredible bosses in the area – Right there in Richmond is so close to the beach. You're not far from DC if you want to go to DC. You can go to the, you can go to Charlottesville. I mean, everything is best food, best beer if you like beer, all that stuff. Uh, major, how, co- go ahead. How long were you there? I was there three years. I extended a year. I was only supposed to be there two years, but they asked for me to stay for an extra year, so I did. And I thought that my prospects of getting a, a, a my next job would be better if I stayed there because. Fort Lee, uh, there's this thing out there called taking a knee. And what that means is, uh, is like in football, you say, hey, you ever take a knee? So you, you sit on your knee. That's what they say at certain installations is you're not working very hard at these installations. Mm. You're, you're kind of taking a knee. And Fort Lee is considered one of those. And so I was like, take, I didn't know. So I'm like taking a knee at this place. Yeah. And I can see why, because there's so much, there's so much to do for your family and where I lived. I really liked it. I mean, some of the best bosses I had, Major Cargis, Colonel Peterson, Colonel Mullins. Uh, my best buddies, like Coble, uh, Mejia, Heather Martin, she, I think she's still in. And then my very best buddy from there is Brad Dixon. Um, he was an SVP at that time, and he's now out now with his own practice in Savannah, Georgia. But, um, yeah, man, Fort Lee is, is at, at my top right there. Yeah. All right, Rob, well, let's let's have you jump in here. Your favorite or one of your favorites? I think people are going to smile at mine, too, and be like, what? But for a lot of the same reasons, uh, I've got Fort Benning number one. Um, I switched it up at the last second. Uh, Fort Benning was a place where I did my, I did my direct commissioning there. Um, I was stationed there for four years. Uh, I'm sure I fell in love there. I'm sure at some time I fell out of love there. I was at, uh, I was stationed at Fort Benning when I met my wife, um, tried my first case there as a prosecutor and defense attorney, have wonderful lifelong friends that live in the Fort Benning area, enjoyed the location, believe it or not. I, I thought, uh, downtown Fort Be- or downtown Columbus, Columbus, Georgia. Yeah, I thought downtown Columbus was a, a lovely little spot um, with some pretty good restaurants and some pretty good places to have a beer. I I was close to some historical things that made meant a lot to me, like the little White House and Pine Mountain. I'm an FDR enthusiast, so I got to go and meet some historians there and, and things like that. You still visit those places? I still visit those places. I still I I'm in I'm in Fort Benning uh, or I'm in Columbus, Georgia, non work related at least three four times a year. Um, so. I would say uh, Fort Benning. Uh, I don't think I would be who I am today for better or for worse without Fort Benning. And your second, it sounds like a close second, maybe even a tie for first. Let me guess. Cherry Point. That's right. Uh, and again, not a metropolis by any stretch. But, um, you know, I had a, a trial at a Cherry Point that was rather extensive where I had the privilege of uh, representing a Marine who had been falsely accused. Uh, The government had turned its back on him. Uh, We dealt with a crooked agent, in my opinion. But it's one of those things where... I had a great defense team. I had great experts. Shout out to to, to Kevin Peden, the best there is, the best digital forensic expert there is in the business. Um, ju- the, the military judge on the case was wonderful to work with. The, the government was respectful towards me. It, it was a, a trial that worked the way it should with the right result of full acquittal. But also the town of New Bern, which is just outside of Cherry Point, is my kind of town. It's it's on the it's on the Nice River or the Noose River. Uh, I live. It's on the Noose River. Um, and it's a historical, it's antebellum, it has beautiful architecture, it has cool antique places, it's the founding of Pepsi. Um, I did a whole historical thing there, I did a tour there. Uh, and of course, for me, if you're going to be in my top five, you got to have one thing in common, which is you got to have a good coffee place that's not Starbucks uh, or Dunkin' Donuts, God help us, Dunkin' Donuts is the worst coffee in America. But um, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, Matt's looking at me like, oh, we're going to have to edit that out, we might get sued. Um, but... They had a coffee place in downtown New Bern that was just fantastic. So I would get up the mornings of trial. I'd go for a run along the river. I'd get my coffee and um, enjoy that process a lot. Well, the home of Pepsi is a little diner, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's diner. kind of a nothing. Yeah. But when you dig deeper into the history of New Bern, which I did, Mickey knows I have a weird fascination for history. I got in touch with a local historian there. 
Um, I got to go see the original. I got to go see the original Pepsi plant where it was. Um, there's a ton of Civil War history there, which uh, intrigues me a tremendous amount. Um, and it was just, it's just an incredibly beautiful small town in America. You drove there, right? You drove? Every time. Yeah. I don't like to fly. Yeah, I know. The only reason I ask is at the airport there, they actually have some exhibits. Yeah, that's uh, what right you tell me. Little, yeah, right in a little terminal. And, and those are cool. I think some of them might have been war uh, war related, but I think some of them were Pepsi as well. So if you ever decide to fly or come back, it might be worth visiting. It's but a I, peaceful. I've actually been to that city. It's great. I've sat out mm-hmm. on the water, eating some great seafood. That's a very nice place. It's just eat. a peaceful place. And when I try a case, there's a lot going on, and I like peace. I don't like to be in a city. I don't like traffic. I don't like confusion. I like to be at peace. And uh, New Bern's a peaceful place. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mickey. Yes. You want to give your second favorite? You want to give one of your least favorites? Yeah, I'll I'll give um, my next favorite would have to be NES Pensacola there in Florida in the Panhandle. I love that area down there. I will take any case that comes through the door that's in that part of Florida or in Jacksonville or Mayport, Florida down there. I love it. And um, the food is great. The weather's always good. I've never been down there. Well, I think I was down there when it rained really bad one time, but yeah. you know, it only rains for a little bit, and then you know everything's good again. Um, it's it's kind of a quiet area, believe it or not. Uh, it's not most of these most of our cases are outside big cities, so you have to fly into the airport and then navigate. But now, that, is that more Pensacola, or is it down toward Rosemary Beach, or Destin, or all that area? It's um, it's in, yes, it's a it's kind of Pensacola all of Pensacola is yeah, the base, right? Yeah, uh, NAS, so it's a naval air station. So yeah. it's the Navy, and I think they have some Air Force guys and some Marines there. And um, I've had several cases out of, out of that area, and I just love going down there. I mean, I could, I could go down. There. It would be no problem for me because it's a five hour drive. Boom, I'm there. Check in, yeah, and prep the case. And it's just, you can practice outside, in your room, whatever. It's just awesome. I love it down there. Yeah, that's a beautiful area of the country. We're spoiled because we are only five hours from it. We spend a lot of time down there on 30A Rosemary Beach. Yeah. It's always great to see the fighter jets fly over because we're not used to that where we're at. The, Blue Angels, the, are, the and, Blue Angels are there, and they'll do uh, flybys on the beach all the time. Yeah. It's, it's wild, man. So cool sitting out there and seeing those birds yeah. go over. Um. How about one of your least favorite places, Mick? Let's uh, yeah, let's slam something so, or somebody. This one's got a story attached to it. Um, I'll, Fort Bliss, Texas, <laughs> <laughs> and it's nothing wrong with the base. I got no problem with the base. Is that like El Paso? Where? Is yeah, that? it's El Paso. It's El Paso. And I was, I, I had a trial there. Uh, this was, I think, last summer, and. I, I was staying at a regular hotel. It wasn't anything fancy. Maybe that was my mistake. I don't know. You get a rental car wherever you go. That's because you, you got to be able to drive around. You got to be able to drive on base, whatever. I'm, I do the trial. We get done. I'm headed out. I'm I'm about ready to take off. And I go out. I leave my hotel. I got all my stuff. And I'm looking for my car. And it's a rental car. I'm like, where the hell is my car? I thought I parked it right here. I walk back inside. And I say, hey, you know, I had a car parked out there. What happened? They're, they're all... You know, shrugging their shoulders yeah. like, oh, "What are you talking about, guy?" We <laughs> the car. Yeah. I go, "Yeah, my car's not here. I have my key, and I go out there, and I'm hitting the, you know, the to see if I can hear it. Maybe I parked it somewhere that I'm just don't sure. know. It's gone. Somebody stole it. it. It's gone. Yeah, somebody stole the freaking car. Yeah, and so I call the police, the hotel clerk's brother. <laughs> yeah, I go, yeah. I call the police. You know, they want me to file a report and all this stuff, and they're saying I got to stay. I said I can't stay. I got a flight. I got to catch. Like I don't have time for this. Yeah. Um, and then I go to the rental car place. I think it was Avis, whatever. And they've got it on GPS at some other place and say, yeah. and, and then they go there and get it. They say, oh, it's fine. It's just over here. Somebody must have joyride. I don't know what happened, but I had a, my car was stolen. Yeah. So, uh, that's why I say El Paso because I got, I got robbed or uh, not robbed Capavilla, but I got, <laughs> I got, <laughs> thank you for the clarification. Yeah, I got, I got, so stole my car. Yeah, uh, but that's why. Well, so that'll that's... put a damper on any trip, really. Um, what about yeah, you, Cap? The least favorite experience or place to go to. So, if we're past, moving on to future, yeah, if we're moving on to least favorite places, um, my number one is Fort Hood. 
um, the base is, is fine. It's kind of a, a, a beacon of the United States Army, right? Fort Hood is is entrenched with uh, military history. It's uh, probably one of the largest army bases in the country. I have no problem traveling there. The base is fine. I did not like the surrounding area very much. Um, when I was there, I just kind of had a bad experience. Um, it rained every day, um, and I ate at – I got a recommendation to eat – uh, at a Mongolian place. <laughs> and to say that I was in rough shape after that is an understatement. So my experience or memory, my primary memory of Fort Hood is um, having a case that did not go my way, uh, being rained on constantly, being yelled at by the military judge, and then, of course, being sick. An all-around great trip. An all-around, an all-around great trip. And I just didn't, I, I don't, I didn't like the area very much. Um Another favorite place of mine um, is Hanscom Air Force Base outside of Boston. Um, I stayed at a hotel that was connected to a wonderful steak restaurant and then a great breakfast place. Um, I stayed, I forget the name of the town that I stayed in now, but I didn't stay in Boston. I stayed uh, outside of Boston in like a suburb. It was awesome. Um, It was really close to the uh, Paul Revere Trail. Where they had all this, you ran this trail and it had all this, first it was beautiful, but then it had all this Revolutionary War history there. Um, I ran that trail. Uh, they had some lovely coffee shops. Everything was pretty local. Um, and of course, the case went my way, got a full acquittal. The judge was great to work with, awesome guy. And I had a wonderful Burlington. Burlington, I think, is where I stayed yeah. in Boston. And just a great town. Uh, really cool energy. I toured Harvard. I got a tour of Fenway. And then my wife came up and visited me after the trial. And we went up to Cape Cod. And uh, we drove all around Cape Cod. The best food I ever ate in my life. And then I was able to find the Kennedy compound, which is like a private residence. It's kind of hard to find. Did but they let I, you in? No, no, God, no. They thought um, you looked like a Kennedy? Or no, what? no, definitely not. All I could really see Tall, was the roof. dark, But we handsome. found it. We found it. And that was a... Uh, Yet, yeah, maybe dark and handsome. Tall, not so much. Anybody who knows me and calls me tall uh, would be a liar. That's a great. Uh, that's a great part of the country to go to as yeah. well. What's uh What's the most uh, maybe beautiful, scenic, nicest base when you're on it? When you're mm. actually on it, not oh, the surrounding easy. area. Oh yeah, I, but the most beautiful base to go to if you got to be on. I bet you we have the same answer, Mickey. I'm going to say West Point, West Point, uh, New York, up there. To me, when I was on West Point, I mean, that place is like a castle. Like, it really is. When you drive into the, I've had several cases there. And then you can, it's right there in the mountains, too. Like, in the fall time, all the mountains or all the trees are changing colors and everything. And I stayed in a place called Fishkill, New York. And the food it was Famous. great. Yeah, food was fantastic. The people were all very friendly. Even when you think New York, you think, hey, out of my way, you know, yeah. you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. Everybody's very friendly and uh, I fly in. So the one thing I do uh, that I do is I don't fly into LaGuardia or JFK. I, I fly into Connecticut and then drive down. Yeah. It's just easier. smart. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah, it's just easier. And, um, the, I'm telling you, man, that's some of the most beautiful country right there. Is it a big base or no? Well, it's a university. Yeah. And yes, it is. Cause it's also a military uh, it's a it's a military base or a military installation, I guess. Because yeah. when you're at West Point, when you're a cadet at West Point, you're in the military. Yeah, you fall into the UCMJ. You can be prosecuted and get court martialed. Um, and and that's how I get hired or we get hired yeah. to go up there. And I love going up there, man. I guess the only thing that that's rough is getting parked is being able to park. Yeah, you can't really park on West Point. Like there's cars everywhere. Yeah, because they've got so many cadets there. Robert, is that your top choice too or no? No, it, it wasn't. And in fact, I've had three or four clients out of West Point um, since we've been doing this. None of those cases proceeded to court martial. I have actually never been to West Point, um, but I would love to go. And I've heard it's beautiful and Mickey raves about it. I think probably the nicest base, like when you're actually on post, is probably McDill Air Force Base. Oh, yeah. Um, you're right there on the water. Mm-hmm. Um, SOCOM is there, right? Now, yeah. where is that? Tampa. At? Tampa, Florida. Okay. Um, the buildings are really quite beautiful. The PX is big. The commissary is nice. Um, and you're right there on the Inner Bay Peninsula or whatever. It, uh, and you're you're just outside of Tampa. And it's a beautiful base, in my opinion. It I'm, really is a beautiful base. I'm surprised nothing in California. Well, Coronado, yeah. the... San Diego is really nice. San Diego, yeah. yes. I, I didn't have that on my list, but San Diego, Coronado Island is just yeah. gorgeous. 
and the Camp Pendleton is probably the biggest, one of the biggest bases around or, or installations. It's a camp, right? Yeah. So the Marines call them camps. Um, that thing is like a city in and on of its on itself. They have like a horse ranch on there too, where you can rent horses and everything. It's crazy. Yeah. What what makes a good experience at a base? And you can't say the people because that's the obvious answer. But are we talking what, about as a defense attorney or just as a trap? What uh, if you're somebody in the service? Let's say what so, what what makes a good experience at a base? Is that a fair question? I think so. I think it's a hard question because yeah. people have a lot of different experiences, you know, whether you have a family or not, you know, I can say for me personally, um, I liked, I, I've never been a city guy, so I never wanted to be in a city. Um, but I liked having stuff to do. Um, I liked being close enough to family where I could get home for the weekends. Um, and that's why I liked Fort Benning so much. Cause it's close to where I'm from. I got to see my family after being gone for two or three years, the downtown area was nice. There was enough happening to keep you interested. Uh, so I, that's the kind of thing that I looked for. I never felt like a place like Fort Knox is on my least, my least favorite list. I always felt like there was nothing nice around me. Like you, you, you even have a hard time getting a good cup of coffee at Fort Knox. Yeah. Right. I never liked that feeling. I don't know who would, but I never particularly liked that. And I, and I think too, there had to be a decent place to live off post because as an officer, I did not like living on post. Mickey, what makes a good experience? I agree with what Rob said. Things to do. Um, if you're out, if you like the outdoors, like going hikes, you know, things like that. I think that's important. Uh, also, I lived for three years at Fort Campbell and I hated it, man. I absolutely hated it. It's like on the border of Tennessee and Kentucky. And there's not much. I mean, Nashville's right. People are like, oh, go to Nashville. There's only so many times you can go to Nashville. And it's not that that close, is it? Uh, it's about 45 minutes away. But yeah, I lived, so I lived in between. It was like 20, maybe 30 minutes for me. It took me an hour to get to work every day. I had like seven acres or something out there, which was nice. But the base itself, Fort Campbell itself, man, it's like it's like gray skies constantly. Um, no. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I feel the same way about Fort Campbell. I, um, I met. Well, Mickey, uh, Mickey and I spent a lot of time together at Fort Campbell. I was working a murder case out of there at the time. This is, I don't know, 2015, 16, yeah. 17. I don't know. The years kind of pile on top of each other. But um, I thought Campbell was depressing. Uh, and, is, and I yeah. thought what, what the town that it's in, I thought was Clarksville. Clarksville, I thought was depressing. I was all excited, 101st, all this kind of stuff. And I didn't enjoy my time there at all. It was probably also compromised by the fact that I was working a very brutal murder case that uh, was, was dark yeah. in a lot of ways uh, to kind of cope with and deal with. There's not very many good restaurants there. I mean, Nashville's got great restaurants, yeah. but Clarksville, where the majority of everyone lives, it just wasn't that... Yeah, and I was never there. impressed with Nashville. You know, I, I didn't like Nashville that much. So to me, you know, Fort Campbell's on my least likely, you know, least favorite places. Now we go, we have cases there. We enjoy, uh, we enjoy practicing law there, but I did not enjoy my time at Campbell much. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got to wrap it up. We're at uh, oh, I got eight minutes, but but I do want to give you a chance to give the last ones on okay. your list and okay. any additional stories that we shouldn't leave sure. off of this episode. So, uh, Robert, why don't you go any, any top, uh, let me think about, or let me think about that. Matt, Mickey's got one he wants to talk about and then come back to All me. Right, got yeah. You. This was just from a few weeks ago and a shot to the top or one of the top. I was looking forward to this trip, man. I was so pumped. I've never been to Alaska. I wanted to go so bad. There's only one problem. I went in freaking December, which is probably a yeah. mistake. And what's wild is I, I come in, it's at Fort Richardson in Alaska, which is right outside of Anchorage. And I fly, the, the flight's long. You, you fly all the way to Seattle, and then from Seattle, you fly into Anchorage and, and so on. As soon as I land, I'm, I'm, cause I'm thinking, I'm look researching restaurants. Hey, I'm going to get this. I'm, and this, I'm sitting next to a guy who lives in Alaska. So oh, you got to go here, here, here. I'm like, oh, right. I'm, I'm ready to go. I land and suddenly the snow starts to fall, right? There's snow on the ground already, but there's snow. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's nothing big. Yeah. But everybody's talking about the weather. Like, oh, it's going to be bad. And, and, uh, when the locals are saying, hey, stay safe out there, you know it's bad, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it was like the worst snow they had in like three, four years. I had no idea. And I check into my hotel. Oh, first of all. Well, they gave you like a Kia Soul, Yeah, that's right? what I was going to say. They gave you like a Kia Soul I, at the I, rental I car. I go to the rental car place, and they should not be allowed to rent you 
anything other than a pickup or SUV when you're in Alaska yeah, during the winter four months, four, right? I mean, come on. But they they have they give me this Kia. I get a Kia, which is just a car, like a little sedan or whatever. And I'm driving, and the first day is fine. I'm like, okay, I'm, this is not bad, whatever. And I check in the hotel. You know what they do when I check in the hotel? They give me a shovel, a snow shovel. And they say, <laughs> you're going to need this for tomorrow or while you're here. I'm like, what? Are you crazy? And, dude, it rained, it, snow, it snowed 10 inches in, like, the first two hours. Like, an incredible amount That's of snow. That's crazy. And the roads were freaking horrible they shut down so i had uber eats the first night i was there because i got in four hour time difference from where we live so i was already kind of exhausted Uh, so i ordered uber eats no problem got my food and i was really looking forward to getting ready for this case and and getting it all done and then the next day you go outside there's just they're trying to plow they can't there's just too much snow my car's covered i gotta dig it out i can barely drive the thing without sliding everywhere and Every restaurant is closed. Yeah. It's Alaska. In December, you, it, winter comes every single year. I would think that they would be able to do it. Uber wouldn't deliver anything. So you know what I'm eating? I'm eating a cup of noodles in my yeah. in my room. From the little from the uh, lobby. supermarket in the lobby. Yeah, it costs like eight bucks for one. For you think one the prosecutors knew you were coming into town? They called the rental car agency and said, hey, when Mickey Williams comes in, give him the... Give them the little well, tiny car. So I would like to blame it on them, <laughs> but I pick the vehicle. Yeah. So Mickey made some very serious rookie mistakes. Yeah. And he called me from he called me from Alaska and I couldn't help but pick on him a little bit. He's like, Rob, it's really cold here. I'm like, Well, Mickey, <laughs> you're in Alaska in December. What did you expect? Well, I got this Kia. You rented a Kia in December <laughs> yeah. in Alaska? Why didn't you get a truck? Oh, I guess I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. December Alaska, you didn't think it was going to be bad, bro? But they shouldn't yeah. allow. They it, no, it should they should really be a requirement. I blame you get them. a Bronco. You know, I you blame a- them. Listen, I love the area. I know I'll. I'm going to go back. I'm always going to go back in the summer I, in July yeah, because I know it's a great place to be. Yeah, it was so beautiful. The mountains, in, biggest mountains I'd ever seen, driving onto the base. And um, yes, it was bitter, bitter, bitter cold. Probably some of the most extreme cold I've ever had. But I could just tell how cool that yeah. place is. It was just a weird experience. Are you going to talk about Alameda? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're short on time. Yeah. Um, I, I want to touch just a few things. Um, so, yeah, Alameda sucks. It's outside of Oakland. That was a terrible place to be for a court martial. That's a Coast Guard base. Um, I've got uh, Polk on my list. It doesn't need to be explained. If you've been to Polk, you know what I'm See, talking I about. I like Polk, though. I like it there. Man. I didn't like Polk. I didn't I didn't think there was there was hardly anything to do or any decent place to eat. But I'm going to give some diamonds in the rough here. Uh, I'm going to finish with diamonds right. in the rough. Um, okay. Cat da- secret list. Yes. Dias Air Force Base. Um Abilene, Texas. Interesting. Abilene, Texas is not a bad place to be. It's the home of Abilene Christian, which is a pretty good sized college. They have some wonderful coffee shops. They had an outstanding cigar bar there, and they've got a steak restaurant. And I've got it pulled up here because I could not remember the name. It's called Perini Ranch. It was established in 1983, and you drive out of this, you know, out of Abilene all the way up to this cattle ranch, and that was the best ribeye steak I'd ever had. So Abilene, Texas, not so bad. A celebrity like you endorsing the place, I mean, they're going to be beating down the doors <laughs> yeah. for the next month. Um, okay, so another another kind of diamond in the rough is Manhattan, Kansas, where Fort, you know, by Fort Riley. Really? Yes, don't stay in Junction City, trust okay. me. Stay in Manhattan, Kansas. That's the home of Kansas State. Uh, some really cool places to go. Very interesting town. A lot of nice hotels. Um, and those are just some kind of uh, diamonds in the rough that I, I wanted to throw out there. Um, not not the worst places. If you get orders to Fort Riley, Kansas, you, you might be bummed. But, you know, there's worse places. Uh, Fort Sill is a worse place, for example. Um, but, yeah, some diamonds in the rough. Well, yeah. I, one last diamond in the rough. Fort Huachuca, Arizona, right outside Tucson. Great place, believe it or not. Some of the best food I've ever had was at Fort Huachuca, man. And it's 30 minutes from Tombstone. So if you like history and you like the Wild West like I do, then you're going to love Fort Huachuca, man. It's almost worth the trip to go to the OK Corral. There you go. Well, that was great. Any last additions either way? No, Nick, time is up. Good? Yeah. Time We're is at, up. Uh, 44 minutes. So, well, listen, a, a fun, lighthearted episode kind of to mix in with some of the more serious stuff we've covered over the last few weeks. 
We certainly appreciate our audience for listening. Feel free to chime in with your favorite or least favorite places. Maybe we'll talk about it in our uh, episode roundup here that we do in the next month or so. But signing off for Military Justice Today, for Robert Capavilla, Mickey Williams, I'm Matt Stroziak. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Military Justice Today podcast with your hosts, Robert Capavilla and Mickey Williams. This show was made possible in part by the law firm of Capovilla and Williams. For more information or to listen to more episodes, visit militaryjusticetoday.com.